Okay, Mr. Murad, are, are you ready to go to a breakout with some of these people in the waiting room? Okay, give me a moment. I'm going to bring in first some of the unidentified people. I'm going to send you to number two. Okay, the person that's in the in the car with the black something on your face, I need you to pay attention to your screen and go to the way uh, to the breakout room, please. All right. This is Case number 1945943, the people of the state of Michigan versus <clears throat> Latoy Green. The defendant is charged with operating with the high BAC. And today is the date set for a final pretrial. Appearances, please. May it please the court. Darnell Barton, P83363, on behalf of the people, Your Honor. Good morning. May it please the court, W. Otis Culpepper for Ms. Green, 23520. Ma'am, please unmute yourself and tell the court your name. Latour Green. Today is the day set for final pretrial conference. How are we proceeding? As I indicated earlier, Your Honor, I attempted to get a, get a hold of Mr. Barton by email about eh, two days ago. I don't think he's, I, don't, I guess he didn't see get it from me. Um, I haven't gotten an offer. Uh, so my suggestion would be that we set it for trial. I'll continue to try to reach out to Mr. Barton so we, and, we'll, and we'll sort this matter out and get back to the court and get rid of it that way. Mr. Barton, so let me ask a question. Yes, Your Honor. So when I when I set the matters for final pretrial and I say discovery should be submitted by a certain date, we're saying that discovery isn't automatically submitted by the certain date. I don't understand what Mr. Culpepper is saying to me. Well, Barney, usually I no, I'm sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. Mr. Barton. Uh, let me know that I'm not pointing a finger at you, Mr. Barton. I, no, no, no. I, no, Attorney Culpepper, no, this is this has nothing to do with you, and I apologize for interrupting you, sir. No, Your Honor, I usually do send these uh, discovery out the same day. If I don't have the file or anything like that, I'll contact the attorney directly. But in court, uh, usually I ask them to send me a discovery request uh, so that I have their email. But in this case, I I will make sure I get this information to Mr. Culpepper. I don't under, I don't know why I wouldn't. Uh, I have the file here, so I don't know why that, that is the case. So I'll go ahead and get it to him. I, if Mr. Culpepper, if you could email me, I, I don't have an email from me, but if you could email me, um, so I have your email address, I'll go ahead and get this to you today. He so, said he emailed Your Honor, I do apologize. But, yeah, because I let me- I don't have an email address. This is just, um, so this is, I, I, I asked the question because mm. I understand that we have probably become um, a little bit more relaxed because the um, because of the coronavirus and the Supreme Court having relaxed the time guidelines. But coming to the final pretrial conference and saying that they that that we don't have discovery, that's that's like unacceptable because we're at the final pretrial. This isn't the, the first pretrial conference. This is the final pretrial conference. 
and and at some point when the Supreme Court um, reinstitute the time guidelines, if I'm still sitting on this bench, um, and that's a big if, um, <clears throat> I'm I'm I mean this would be unacceptable, and it would be a cause for dismissal, depending on what you know what the the reason reasoning is. So I don't want us to get comfortable with not getting stuff done by the final pretrial. Obviously, I, I couldn't set a jury trial if I wanted to at this point. However, um, eventually this is going to pass. And and when it passes, it, there's not really going to be a ramping up to let's get back to sticking with the time guideline. This is something that we should do. So today is the day set for final pretrial conference. I'm going to continue the matter for another final pretrial conference, but the, the submission of discovery is something that should be done between the pretrial conference and the final pretrial conference. It, it's what should be done. It, it's what should be done. All right. So the court is going to continue the matter to a final pretrial conference, and we're going to set the matter for January. Um, <clears throat> Actually, we've crossed over into November, haven't we? Yes, we have. So that means I'm actually going to set the matter for February the um, 3rd, final pretrial conference, February the 3rd. And that's going to be at 9.15. That means if, if there's no resolution, and we'll set the matter for jury trial if we are allowing jurors, if we have a date by which we're allowing jurors in the building. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. All right, you're welcome. Anything you. further? No, Your Honor, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And if I didn't say this, of course, Ms. Green's not guilty plea is continued. Um, and we're continuing the matter to a final pretrial conference. You all have a good day. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, you're welcome. <sighs> okay. Um, do I have Attorney Stevenson yet? It doesn't appear so. I'm here in the courtroom that I have to go back and forth. Oh, but then that means that I just need to send everybody to break out with Mr. Murad then? Yes, and I think what I'm doing is if I join in there, if I can. I don't know. All right. Good morning, Mr. Doyle. Um, who are you appearing on behalf of this morning, please? You, you are muted, sir. Good morning, Your Honor. I'm appearing on behalf of Ms. Latoya Love. Okay. With you. Mr. Barton, you have some complaining witnesses in the waiting room. Are any of those attached to this file? Yes, Your Honor, Miss uh, Latuana Major. Ma'am, you're yawning without covering your mouth right in the video screen. Can you please not do that? Okay, this is case number two zero. Four five four six six. The people of the state of Michigan versus Latoya Jean Love. The defendant is charged with one count of assault or assault and battery. And today is the date set for a pre a final a final pretrial conference. Appearances, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. 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 Good morning
May it please the court, Darnell Barton, PA3363 on behalf of the people. And for the record, Your Honor, I have the complaining witness here, Ms. Latuana Major. Ms. Major, can you unmute yourself and just state your name for the record, please? Latuana Major. And Thank you. And good morning, Honor Attorney Dan Doyle. That's P73181, appearing on behalf of Ms. Latoya Love. Ms. Love, and please state your name for the record. Latoya Jean Love. Oh, wait, I just sent that galaxy to the wrong breakout room. Okay, today's the date set for a final pretrial conference. Uh, how are we proceeding, please? Your Honor, it's my understanding that we're going to continue this matter to a jury trial. Today is the date set for a final pretrial conference. The court is going to continue a not guilty plea on behalf of Ms. Love. The complaining witness is present today. The court is going to set this matter for another final pretrial conference, February the 3rd at 9.15. If we are allowing jurors in the building, then we will set a jury trial at that time. The complaining witness has appeared today. Therefore, Ms. Major, you do not have to appear on February 3rd if you don't want to. However, if you want to, if you... Okay, Madam, I'm sorry. If you want to, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, but as the complaining witness, you of course are welcome to appear at all scheduled court appearances. Um, bond will continue for Ms. Love with no contact of any kind with the complaining witness. Anything further? Not, no, no, I, I, I believe they're neighbors, if, if I'm not correct. So if we can just make it no assaultive contact, I, just to protect everyone. I guess. No, it's no contact. I, you, I don't no, have okay. contact with my neighbors. I don't have any contact with my neighbors unless I go over to my neighbor house or unless they come over here. Otherwise, I don't have any contact with my neighbor. There's no contact with the complaining witness. Sounds good. Thank you, Your Honor. Absolutely, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. Okay. Ma'am, you are in a, in a vehicle. You have red braids. I have sent you to a breakout room. Can you please accept to join the breakout room? I, I don't know how to tell you how to do it. It comes up on your screen and it says, go to the breakout room. I don't know what to tell you. But in a minute, you're getting ready to go to that waiting room and you're gonna be there all day. Okay, well, I'm gonna put you back in the waiting room. I, I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Um, Ms. Stevenson, can you look in this waiting room and tell me who I should be sending with Mr. Marat, please? Um, could we send, please, Kiashina Hall Dean. Um, do we have um, Laura Holmes, because the AG is here on the Laura Holmes case. Are we ready on She Holmes? is in the waiting. Yes, we right. are. You're ready uh, on Actually, Judge, is it? Well, I would like to, I would like to try to do a breakout with Mr. Townsend, if I could try that. Okay. So before I send you to a breakout with Mr. Townsend, um, tell me who else I'm sending with um, Mr. Murad. I don't so, know if I said Dino Fleming. Hold on, let me send this person. Yeah. Um, Hall, Hall Dean, you said. Yes. 
<sighs> what about this person I made a mistake and brought in here? Somebody, Kelly. Rashar Kelly can go, unless Mr. Barton knows. Oh no, Rashar Kelly can definitely go. Okay, as soon as I find his name on my thing over here. Oh, he already went. He just came. He just came out. They changed his name. Okay. Okay. He already went. And anyone else? Ayana Boykins. And um, Edward Williams, and then I just got a message from Mr. Murad that said he got kicked out, and he's in the waiting room. <laughs> so listen. Oh, there he is. Okay. The Mariah has to just. Yeah, okay. And then you said who else? Oh, this. If you got Tiana Boykins and Edward Williams. I sent to you on a boy and she just had to go on. Okay. Right. That's enough for him. Okay. And then um, I'll send you and Mr. Um, Townsend. Mr. Barry, your client is here. If, oh, yeah, Mr. Barry. Yes, ma'am. Your client is, is here. We're, uh -oh. We're waiting on a special prosecutor, Joshua Holman. Are we? Who is Joshua Holman? Joshua Holman don't know I start on time. <laughs> I, I start on time. Oh, Joshua Holman, the case is going to be... I missed the miss the <laughs> I'm, oh, so I'm good with whatever you want to do, Judge. I'm so sorry. You know, I, I declared that I was gonna try to do better. And I I I I don't even know how to do better. Um <laughs> I'm not mad at you, Judge. <laughs> they told me that some of the defense bar, which this is this was new to me because I didn't this never happened to me before that some of the defense bar was complaining um about something about me and the plea agreements or something. And I said, oh, I never had the defense bar complain about me. Um, I'm, oh, used yeah. to, I'm used <laughs> to the prosecutors complain about me, but uh, that was new to me. Um, then I said, I was gonna try to do a little better, um, but I probably won't. Cause I'm, I really am satisfied and happy with how I act. <laughs> so, I'll tell you, Judge, so I, anyway. held, I held an exam in front of you and, and, and I was impressed. Uh, with the way that you handled it and your knowledge of the law. So I don't have any complaints on my end. Um, yeah, I, um, why is my court reporter? What's she sending me? Let me see. Josh Holman just sent me a text. He said he's coming in right now. Oh. Good. Cause he was getting ready to get his case. Oh, there he is. He right. <laughs> uh, to follow me. Let me see. I'm just talking. I don't even know what. I don't even know what time. Oh no, it was scheduled for eight thirty. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. I give him a chance. Good morning, Mr. Holman. I was getting ready to dismiss your case. They didn't tell you I started at eight thirty. 
Good morning, Your Honor. Sorry about that. I was uh, I had a hearing with Judge Talon that also started at eight thirty in the morning. It, it communicated. Uh, Judge, tell Judge Talon. Tell Judge Talon I got to go to Judge. Talon. I'm just messing. <laughs> we just got we just got ready for you, so that maybe that was a good idea to go. Yeah. I'm I'm glad that I got out of there when I did because you don't normally uh, get out of there as, as as soon as I did this morning. So um, I, I apologize. Oh, I'm, I'm, apologize I'm for being tardy. That would have been. This morning, I have a question, counseling in your office with you, but I also see a, a Scott Povish in my waiting room. Is your client with you present, or should I bring Scott Povish out of the waiting room? No, he's in the waiting room, Judge. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. Um, okay. And. Good morning, Ronnie. He's in the way. Good morning. Now, I hope your vehicle isn't moving, Mr. Povish, because I have. That, that sends my rocket. That sends my rocket to the moon. So you're gonna you gonna stop. That is you're correct. You're stationary, correct? That is correct. All right. All right. Awesome. Okay. This is um case number. Why do I have a special prosecutor? These charges are the same charges I always see. That's not my business. You don't have to tell me, Mr. Holman. <laughs> not even my business <laughs> I'm, 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 sure it'll, I'm sure it'll become uh, obvious to you as we as we move on with this case okay uh, all right this is case number two zero four five seven four nine and this is the people of the state of Michigan versus Scott Allen Povish the defendant is charged with operating while intoxicated operating with the high BAC and gun possession while um, operating under the influence. Today is the date set for a pre-trial conference. Appearances, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Joshua Holman on behalf of the people, 71971. Good morning, Your Honor, to you and your staff. Brian Berry appearing on behalf of Scott Povish, P76788, Your Honor. Mr. Povish, your name, please. Yes, good morning, Your Honor. Scott Povish. All right. Let me make myself the co-host on this other device because my computer is acting a little shaky in case I get kicked out. Okay, so um, today is the date set for pre-trial conference. Uh, how are we proceeding today? Your Honor, I've had an opportunity to discuss this case briefly with the prosecution um, and we just need more time. We're trying to reach a, resolu a resolution, Judge. All right. Then today is the day uh, set for pretrial. The court will continue a not guilty plea on behalf of Mr. Popovich, and I will continue the matter to a final pretrial. The court will set the final pretrial for February the 3rd. At nine o'clock, discovery should be submitted to defense if it has already been submitted by January the 4th. Um, bond will continue with no um, drinking and um, when you said it was going to become obvious to me, I, I did think about my next um, point, which would which I would normally also say, um, and I am going to say, so you all may have to um, tell me if I need to do something different or ask me about doing something different. Um, and no no weapons. So does Mr. Popish have to carry a weapon for his employment? Judge, at the current time, he's not uh, carrying a weapon to work. Is he's on uh, desk duty right now? However, his roommates are police thought. officers, and there are guns um, in the house. We would respectfully ask that that be removed. In that, uh, um, well, I'm we not going to remove it, but I will. I mean, I won't. He won't be. He won't. 
he won't be in violation um, for his roommate's weapons, but he can't carry one personally. And so normally I do know that they usually do put officers um, on death duty because the, the department usually removes their weapon if they still do it the way they used to. So nonetheless, I won't remove that, but he wouldn't be, I wouldn't penalize him. I wouldn't violate him for um, had for the, the, them and their weapons. Um, that would also apply if he was in a vehicle with them, um, as long as it's their weapons, uh, you know, and not his weapon. Okay. I understand, Judge. Uh, all right. Anything for anything further? Um, uh, Judge, I do. Oh, I'm sorry, Josh. Go ahead. Go ahead. I have a. I'd like to file with the court a um, objection to the use of the technician's report in the event that this goes forward. I'm required to. Uh, serve notice to the court and to the prosecutor. Um, how may I do that? May I fax it? May I email it? Um, yes, please email it. And I can get that and from you. Yes, you're going to email it to Miss Muldrow and she'll okay. put it in the file for me. So are we'll you do ready? It. Do you already have her email address or are you ready to receive it? I have it, Judge. Okay, so email that to Ms. Muldrow, and then Ms. Muldrow, you don't have to send it to me, just put it in the file. And a copy to me as well, Mr. Barry. Yes, of course, yes. <laughs> of course. Uh, okay. I, was going, I was going to ask, we, we have handed over, uh, I believe all of our discovery. Have you had any trouble opening any of the documents on it, Mr. Barry? I haven't had any trouble, no. Okay, so I, I believe all discovery has been satisfied at this point then, Your Honor. If, if anything comes okay. up, we'll let, we'll let the court Well, know. then did, did you all want an earlier um, pretrial date then? I think so. I don't think it'll hurt. We, we um, all need okay. to, yes, it should be fine. So if, if you already have discovery, I could give you an earlier date. We, can, we could come uh, in December if you want or early or January, which, which do you want? Early, early January may be the best. Okay, so then instead of that discovery cutoff date, I'll change that to the, um, we'll come that week, not that day. So what about Thursday, um, January 7th, I could set the final pretrial. That's good with the people. Okay. That's works, Judge. All right, so then let's change it to January 7th. At nine, at nine o'clock. And then even though you said that you already have discovery, I'll just make the discovery cut off December 4th instead of January 4th, okay? Understood, Judge. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, anything further? No, not from the people. Not from the defense. All right. Okay, then we're all set. Thank you. Have a, a good day. You too, Thank Your Honor. You, Judge. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, you're welcome. All righty. Good morning, Miss Reed. Oh, wait, I might have removed somebody that I wasn't supposed to remove. Why is Mr. Pavish still here? Good morning, Judge. That's weird. I might have removed the wrong person. I hope they dial back in. <laughs> How are you enjoying Zoom? Um, I love Zoom. Um, I am enjoying it tremendously. I love it. 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 Okay, I think I said that five, like five, ten times. Okay. Um, Council, you are appearing on behalf of, I saw your name on my back there. Shannon um, Avery. Shannon Avery. Shannon Avery. And I think I saw them in my waiting room. Oh, I have a lot of people in my waiting room today. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Miss Stevenson, are you already on um, homes? Yes, I am, Your Honor. We are ready. All right, then give me a moment. Oh, then. Oh, let me be, let me be, uh, let me be an equal 
fusser because I don't want anybody to say I be playing favorites or nothing. So you see, I you see you all see I brought Miss Reed out of that waiting room and and I because I knew I knew who she was even though it's her name don't say attorney. I fuss at the attorneys for not putting an attorney next to their name, Miss Reed. I'll put it next to my name. But I knew who you were and I recognized your name and I that and I brought her out of the waiting room. <laughs> I, knew that I don't want to say something. I'm going to put a turning next to my name. <laughs> right. But if, if, look, if, if it was a judge who didn't know you, then they might have left you in there for a long time because I have 20 people in the waiting room. Okay. But we are ready on Miss Avery. This is case number 2045405, the people of the state of Michigan versus Shannon Avery. The defendant is charged with assault or assault and battery. And today is the date set for a pretrial conference. Appearances, please. And please the court, Darnell Barton, PA3363 on behalf of the people, Your Honor. May I please this honorable court, Tatani Sharid on behalf of Shannon Avery, P71454, who is present via and Zoom video. Ms. Avery, your name for the record, please. Shannon Avery. Okay, today is the day set for pretrial. How are we proceeding? Your Honor, I do not have a discovery. I did request discovery at the arraignment and Mr. Toussaint stood in for me and indicated that he, he requested discovery at the exam. I know with the felony matters, it is sent via evidence.com, but I have not received anything. I don't do a lot of misdemeanor, so I don't know if my request has to be different than I'm giving it on the record. Uh, May I go on a breakout room with the prosecutor to see if he can email it to me? Um, you can, but I have a question for the prosecutor. Uh, today, this, I do remember now that Mr. Toussaint stood in for Ms. Reed on the previous occasion. And what I do see Great. is that this matter is scheduled for 8.35. Um, as one of those individuals that's in the breakout, I mean, in the waiting room, should they be a, a, attached to this case? No, Your Honor, the complaining witness on this case is uh, Ms. Cosetta Jones, Ms. Cosetta Jones. And just for the record, I did reach out to Mr. Toussaint. He said he was going to get back to me with your email address. So. Okay, okay so Cosetta Jones, yeah. is Cosetta if you Jones wanna, present? No, Your Honor, she's not. Maybe I can go in the breakout room with the uh, defense counsel, mm -hmm. if possible. Okay. Um, Sure. Thank you, Your Honor. And then I can handle this case with the Attorney General. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. My computer is acting funny. Hold on. I won't. No, that's not what I'm going to do. There we go. Okay. Um, Mr. Barton, didn't I, did I already send you in the breakout room? You were in breakout room number, number seven. seven, so you can return. Okay. Yeah, so you Thank can you. return to number seven, and I will send Ms. Reed to number seven. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Marat, you've talked to everybody in the breakout room already? Everybody, Judge. Well, no, cause don't don't get too excited, cause it's twenty people in the waiting room, so you still got some more people to talk to. <laughs> I'm gonna bring out Miss Holmes, and then Miss Stevenson. Tell me who else can go with Mr. Marad. Okay. Um. We Sorry. already did. We already did. Williams, Boykins, and Fleming, and Kelly. There's a galaxy that didn't go last time, didn't go last time, but I can't redirect her at this time. I, without, uh, without you all giving her, I don't know how to tell her how to go. So she's stay there. Did we do Halprin? Halprin appears to be retained. He must be the attorney, Your Honor, for Richard Ryan. Oh, you're right. You're right, Halprin. <laughs> See what I'm saying? See how? See how the people stay in the waiting room if they don't say attorney and I don't know who they are. I don't know how to. 
don't know how to do that. Okay, so you're right. That's that that's a retain. I guess I'll bring him out in a minute. And, and then what about lions? Did you do lions? Um, Lions is a walk-in. She does not, you know what? She may need to go to a breakout room and make sure she's okay, but I know what's gonna, what I'm gonna ask for on her case. Mr. What Brown. about Destiny Abate? I don't, did she, did Mr. Did Destiny Abate already go? She should go. Oh, Abate, all right. And did Destiny Bradford already go? No. Okay. So Ms. Lyons. What a, I know I know K Mac K Mac didn't go either. Well, let me put these people in there first. So this is I'm sending Miss Lyons, I'm sending to breakout room number two. I'm sending Bradford. Who does not appear for your information, Mr. Um, Mr. Mirage, she, um, Bradford does not have sound. You're going to have to hold up some notes. Got it, Judge. Okay. Um, and then who else? K Mac. That's retained, Mr. Whitfield. Okay. Mackenzie. Should go. Mackenzie and iPhone. All right, um, and then now I'll just go ahead and handle so I can let Mr. Townsend go out. After I send these two out, that'll be it. So you can go back, Mr. Murad, to, is he stuck? Right. There oh, he is. Gone. All right, and I'm sending McKenzie. Now, do you have on the fan? Is that what I'm hearing, or do you have um, feedback? The, some other feedback? It, no, it's the the polycom. Maybe if I could. Oh. I'm so transient today, Judge. I feel. I know. Some, that's the only problem with, with this type of stuff. Our technology does not work, then we're at a loss. Miss Avery, I'm going to put you back in a waiting room until your lawyer and Mr. Barton comes back. Try to turn. Okay. The then we're ready on homes. This is case number. Zero nine, zero nine, zero nine, six two zero three four. The people of the state of Michigan versus Laura Holmes. The defendant is charged with embezzlement, and today is the date set for pretrial appearances. Please. Good morning, Your Honor. For the record, Gregory Townsend, Assistant Attorney General, on behalf of the people of the state of Michigan. And for the record, Your Honor, Janice Stevenson, P57708, appearing on behalf of Ms. Laura Holmes. Ms. Holmes, will you please unmute and just tell the court your name? Laura Holmes. All right, today is a date set for pretrial. How are we proceeding? Your Honor, we are working, Mr. Townsend, uh, Ms. Holmes and I are working toward resolution of this matter. Um, I do already have an executed advice of rights form um, for Ms. Holmes, which I will be tendering to the court. We would ask the court to adjourn today's pretrial conference to a date in very early November, by which time we expect to have this matter resolved. I believe that would be December instead of November. 
Right, what did I, I say? say? You said November. We're in early November right now. See what happens when I'm like wandering around trying to find a place to work. I meant, I meant early December. Thank you, Mr. Townsend. You're welcome. All right. Um, today is the date set. For a pre trial, the court is going to continue not guilty plea on your behalf. And continue the matter to a final pre trial. I will give you an early December date. So let when you say early December, what do you mean? The, the first week of December, Your Honor. Thursday, December 3rd. Ms. Holmes, do you, are you okay with that date? Yes or no? Yes, I am. Thank you. We will set the final pretrial for November 3rd at 9 o'clock a.m. That'll be December 3rd, Your Honor. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes. Ms. Stevenson, you have me. Look, I know. we can't repeat November 3rd. We December 3rd, December 3rd at nine o'clock. Thank you, counsel. Yeah, and your honor, I would also, my P number is, uh, is 35857. Can you oh, okay, yes. 35857. Great. Okay, thank you. All right, anything further? Nothing on behalf of the people, your honor. Nothing on behalf of Ms. Holmes. Thank you so much, your honor. Ms. Holmes, I'll contact you later this afternoon, ma'am. All right. You have a good day. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Thanks, You're Mr. welcome, Judge. Counsel. Have a good day. You too. My computer is um messing up. I will bring Miss Reed's client back out. And then Miss Stevenson, you have a lot of uh, background noise. Are you gonna go into the courtroom? Hello. I'm actually gonna now try to um I'm gonna try to pick my stuff up and go back to my office because hopefully okay. the internet and then we just will have to see what happens. But that background is is death is not the pop there's some kind of alarm on the thermostat that's going off in here and I don't know what how to stop that. So I'm gonna try to move. See what happens. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. This is back on the record with um, the people of the state of Michigan versus Shannon Avery. Uh, and you all have had an opportunity to speak in the uh, breakout room. How are we proceeding? Your Honor, at this time, I would move for a dismissal of the matter. Not only did we speak in the breakout room, I began to attack Attorney Toussaint to make sure I was up to speed on what happened at the last court hearing. And it's my understanding that Your Honor required the complaining witness to be at this hearing, and she had proper notice for a previous hearing. And in as much as she's not here at this time, I would move for uh, the matter to be dismissed. Mr. Barton. Yes, Your Honor. For the record, I uh, asked to speak to the attorney for discovery matters. However, yes, we did reach this this issue with the complaining witness. So the people would respectfully ask if you do decide to dismiss that you do so without prejudice, Your Honor. All right. Today is the day set for a pretrial conference, and the court notes that this is at least the second scheduling of this matter as it is scheduled for 835. The complaining witness has failed to appear People have no explanation for the failure. 
and the court is therefore going to grant defense counsel's motion and dismiss this matter without prejudice for failure of the complaining witness to appear. Uh, Ms. Reed, can you please prepare an order of dismissal to e and email it to my clerk? Absolutely, Your Honor. Can you give me your clerk's email? Yeah. I tried to chat, but it was closed. Yeah, I don't let the people chat because they be saying some stuff in that chat. <laughs> 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 um, and there's look, there's no way to block certain people from chat. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Miss Muldrow, can you give Miss Reed your email address, please? Yes, it is Pamela. Dot Muldrow, and I spell it for you. It's M U L. D is in David. R O W at three six T H District Court dot org. Donna dot M U L D R O three six uh, H. No, let me stop you. She said Pamela, not Donna. Pamela. <laughs> Pamela. P A M E L A. <laughs> right. I get it. This was a long night. Dot M U L D R O at thirty six three D. Dot. No, ma'am. It's M-U-L-D-R-O-W. M-E-L. M-E-L. Uh -uh. Look, I'm going to send it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> now, you I'll get now, I'll get ready to send it to you in the chat. That's what I'm getting ready to do. <laughs> I'm getting ready to send it to her. Thank you, Judge. I'm going to object to this ex parte <laughs> conversation. Go ahead. Look, and I'm going to let you drink your coffee. Go ahead and drink your coffee. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, Judge. Thank you. Judge, you gonna have to, you can't dismiss the case now. That's just, I'm just Because I let her drink that coffee on <laughs> all three. Right. Let me make sure I spelled it right. I'm done with that. Yeah. Look, I'm sending her that in the chat. I'm sending that to Miss Reed in the chat. <laughs> thank you. I received it. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. <laughs> All you right. Um, oh, Miss Stevenson, the jail is here. Is my um probation here? All right. Anything further as it relates to Miss uh, Avery? Nothing further. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Miss. Uh, so, Miss Avery, your attorney will get you a copy of the order of dismissal once she submits it to me. Um, I find it and uh, my clerk will email it back to me, you, Miss Reed. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. You're welcome. You all have a great day. Likewise. So thank, thank you, my you brother know. prosecutor. Thank you. No problem. Have a good day. Good all day. right. Okay, Miss Stevenson. Um, well, let me see. Who was oh, today? Third. <laughs> uh, today is Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. Oh, today is Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. So who? Oh, and that's. You're right. Yeah. Look at that. Today, today is Wednesday, and look at the probation officer sitting so nicely. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm going to admit the jail. They have Mr. Um, McPhee. All right. This is case number. One nine four four three three two. The people of the state of Michigan versus Montes McPhee. The defendant is charged with malicious destruction of a building, and today is the date set for a review. Appearances, please. Yes, for the record, Your Honor. Good morning, Glory Wilson, on behalf for the record, Your Honor, Janice Stevenson, on behalf of Montes McPhee, who I do not see on the screen, Your Honor. Oh, I'm sorry. I highlighted the um for all right. Can you see him now? Yes. Mr. McPhee, will you please tell the court your name? Montes Cardell McPhee. All right. All right. Today is the day set for review, um, Ms. Bumpus. Yes, Your Honor. In this case, Mr. McPhee was placed on probation June 5th of 2019. 
uh, for a period. He was given a delayed sentence, and he was scheduled to be on probation. Sir, why are you holding up that paper? I'm not holding up. No, it's not you. You were? Oh, somebody had a paper. Okay, go ahead, Miss Steves. I mean, Miss Bumpus. You said he was he was placed on probation when? Uh, June the 5th of 2019. And he was scheduled to be off probation December 5th of 2019. He was given a, a, a six-month delay, Your Honor. Your Honor, the probation department submitted a show cause to the court. He was scheduled to appear October 2019. Ms. Stevenson. Your Honor, Mr. McPhee, having had the benefit of counsel, will waive his rights incident to a hearing. At this point, he is admitting that he has violated the terms and conditions of his probation by failing to submit proof of having had a mental health evaluation, failing to pay the total cost of fines, failing to complete anger management, failing to show proof of having submitted to your analysis twice weekly since the date of sentencing. I would offer an explanation to the court. Oh, well, that, okay. I would like to hear that. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm not certain that the court recalls Mr. McBee's last appearance in front of the court. Um, I believe that was in February. Shortly after having been arrested and uh, detained at the Detroit Detention Center, was placed on a suicide watch. Uh, we do believe that at least at his last hearing, he was still in the midst of a mental health crisis, in that um, Mr. McPhee was not even able to identify himself by name. The court trusted in my representation as an officer of the court that, that, that Mr. McPhee is the person I saw on camera at his video arraignment um, just days before his last pretrial conference. So our explanation, Your Honor, is that Mr. McPhee uh, is, is in crisis at this point and has been in need of mental health treatment since having been placed on probation in June of 2019. And for reasons that I'm not able to explain, has not been able to avail himself of mental health services. He's been in jail, Your Honor, on this warrant, not having been able to post the $500, 10% bond set by this court since at least October 27th. And it is, um, to his credit, I did hear Ms. Bumpus say that Mr. McPhee completed all of those 40 hours of community service. Okay, so what are you asking me to do with Mr. McPhee? I would ask the court to close the matter without improvement. The 771 would cause the conviction to land on its record, um, hoping that he would be able to get some mental health treatment. And the alternative is the matter be adjourned, that bond be reduced to personal, that Mr. McPhee be given an opportunity to come to court in person, where hopefully he could be evaluated by 36 District Court Mental Health Court personnel. Oh, I believe, isn't he being held on some felony? Good morning, Your Honor. This is Deputy Dwayne Provence, Wayne County Sheriff's Office. The defendant is remanded until this coming Friday, November 6th, for a violation of probation hearing in front of Judge uh, Deborah Thomas. All right, I'm going to adjourn Mr. Uh, 
Maybe I, I won't I won't close him without improvement at this time. He he um he did complete the community service. Well, how long has he been in custody? Since at least I the 
unmute. Uh -uh. Madam Clerk, what is Judge King's um, courtroom number? He's at 439. His number is 2406. Oh, no, he's not 439. Giles is 439. Oh, wait a minute. Judge King. King, 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 King. Oh, wait. He's at 438. I apologize. Oh, Judge King is 438? Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So his... his... All right. I have a couple more attorneys. Let's see, Mr. Perlman is here on McCoy. Good morning. Um, good morning, Mr. Um, Perlman. Good morning, Judge. How are you? I'm all right. How good. are you? Um, you're here on Mr. McCoy. Yes. I don't see your client in the waiting room, though. Let me see if I sent him back to a breakout. Hold on. No, your client isn't here. Okay, I'll make sure he's on. I'm sorry, I didn't know he wasn't. All right. That's okay. Okay. All right, Miss Stevenson, let's go down the row a little bit here. So, um, are we ready on Ke on Kelly and McKenzie? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Oh, I don't see Mackenzie. Is Mackenzie still in the... Mackenzie may still be in the breakout. Okay. 
Oh, I already brought Mackenzie in. Okay. I, okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, this is Rashar Kelly, case number 2045735, the people of the state of Michigan versus Rashar Kelly. The defendant is charged with assault or assault and battery, and today is the date set for a pretrial conference. Appearances, please. May it please the court, Darnell Barton, P83363, on behalf of the people, Your Honor. Your Honor, Janice Stevens, appearing on behalf of Rashar Kelly, the Mr. Kelly, please just tell the court your name, sir. Mr. Kelly, you want to unmute yourself, please? Reese R. Kelly. Okay, today is the date set for a pretrial conference. How are we proceeding? On behalf of Mr. Kelly, we would move for dismissal. Unless the complaining witness, Rashonda White, is present today in the alternative, we would, Mr. Kelly, continue his plea of not guilty. We would ask that today's pretrial conference be adjourned with Ms. White being required to be present at that adjourned pretrial. Mr. Barton. Yes, Your Honor. We would just respectfully ask, I'm sorry, the complaining witness in this case, his name is Rashonda White, Rashonda White. And Your Honor, we would respectfully ask for a second opportunity to have her appear, if possible. Today is the date set for a pretrial conference. The complaining witness, Ms. White, has failed to appear. Um, today is the first scheduling of this matter. The court is therefore going to deny defense counsel's motion for a dismissal and grant the people's request for an adjournment. The court will adjourn the matter so that the complaining witness has an opportunity, a second opportunity to appear. The court is gonna schedule the matter for Thursday, November the 19th. At 8.35, the complaining witness must appear or the matter will be dismissed. Thank you, Anything Honor. further? Nothing from the people, Your Honor. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Kelly, thank you, Your Honor. Right, then we're all set for November the 19th at 8.35. Thank you, Your Honor. You. Welcome. Have a good day, Mr. Kelly. All right, this is case number 2044472, the people of the state of Michigan versus Crystal. McKenzie, the defendant is charged with driving while license suspended, revoked or denied, and failing to stop at a collision damage accident. Today is the date set for a pretrial conference. Appearances, please. Yeah, please, please, the court. Darnell Barton, P83363, on behalf of the people, Your Honor. For the record, Your Honor, Janice Stevenson appearing on behalf of Crystal McKenzie. Ms. McKenzie, please tell the court your name. Crystal McKenzie. Today is the date set for a pretrial conference. How are we proceeding? Your Honor, Ms. McKenzie will continue her plea of not guilty. We would ask that this matter be set for final pretrial conference. We would ask for discovery as well, Your Honor. The court is going to continue a not guilty plea on behalf of Ms. McKenzie and continue the matter to a final pretrial conference. The court will set the final pretrial conference for January the 21st at 9 o'clock a.m. via Zoom. Discovery should be submitted to defense by December the 23rd. Bond will continue. 
anything further. Nothing from the people, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. And we're all set for January 21st at 9 o'clock. Ms. McKenzie, have a good day. You too, Judge. Thank you. All right, this is case number 1944593, the people of the state of Michigan versus Destiny Sierra Abate. The defendant is charged with operating while visibly impaired. Today is a date set for an arraignment on a bench warrant. Appearances, please. For the record, Your Honor, Lori Bunker, on behalf of probation. And Janice Stevens, on behalf of probation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Abate, will you please unmute and tell the court your name? Destiny Abate. Today is the date set for an arraignment on a bench warrant, Ms. Stevenson. As to the bench warrant, Ms. Abate will stand mute requested a plea of not guilty be entered on her behalf. As to the arraignment on the bench warrant, the court will enter a not guilty plea on behalf of Ms. Abate. I'm assuming since Ms. Bump has put her appearance on the record, this matter was capious at a review? Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Bumpus. Yes, uh, Your Honor, initially Ms. Abate was placed on probation June the 4th of 2019 for a period of 12 months. She was last before this court on June the 3rd of 2020. At that time, Your Honor, her probation was extended until December the 8th of this year. Her review was scheduled on September the 1st of this year, and that's when she came to Mr. Honor. At our last review hearing, the court ordered that she submit proof of having a medical marijuana card. She has provided proof of having the medical marijuana card. I asked somebody for proof of a medical marijuana card. Yes, and also proof uh, from her doctor as to why the marijuana was prescribed. Um, however, Your Honor, since that time, um, I'd like to report that she has not tested
she was before the court June the 3rd. Since that court date, Your Honor, as far as testing, uh, she did fail to report on uh, several dates. Um, some of it had to do with her um, inpatient treatment. However, she has tested as of November 2nd, she was negative. October 18th, she was negative. On October 2nd, she failed to report. And then September 20th and September 1st, she was negative. Okay, Ms. Okay. Stevenson. So I am attempting to learn at this point, Your Honor, whether or not Ms. Avante is is at Sacred Heart or some other facility. And there's Mr. Murad who can maybe answer that question. If I may, Ryan Murad, PA 3665, on behalf of Ms. Destiny Abate. Yeah. Um, I do, I do understand, Your Honor, that Ms. Abate was in rehab at a, at a point in time. As of now, I do not believe uh, she still is. Is that correct, Ms. Abate? Are you not in rehab currently as of now? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. Um, and Your Honor, I'd also like to add, after a conversation with Ms. Abate, I do think she'd be a great candidate for the, uh, for the mental health court uh, based on some of the things we've talked about. I don't know if the court would accommodate that at this time. She doesn't have enough time. She does not. Oh, no, she was, she's been on, she's been on probation since June 14, 2019. I didn't see her until June 3rd, 2020. So she already does not have 12 months left. Anything else? Nothing further, Your Honor. Okay. I don't know. What do you want? Judge, you're breaking up. I said, what do you want me to do with Miss Abate? I said, what do you want me to do with Miss Abate? I said. Your Honor, I, I can't really hear you. I believe you may have asked what you want us to do with Ms. Abate. Wait. I said, I asked you all, what do you all want me to do with Ms. Abate? Your Honor, we would leave it at the court's discretion. Nope. I want to know what do y'all want me to do with Ms. Abate? Because well, my not, discretion is going to send Miss Abate to jail. She mm -hmm. doesn't have any time with any specialty courts. And she just decided to do the stuff the way she wants to do it. She, she just going to do what she want to do. Your Honor, I'm not sure how... So, unless somebody... Go ahead. Honor, go ahead. No, no. Go ahead, counsel. So, from what I understand is that... Uh, and I did not hear Ms. Bumpus's original statement, but what I understand after my conversation with, with Ms. Abate is that she was on her way and she was close to finishing 60 days of inpatient treatment before she went to the hospital. I know that she has made some payments as to her probation. Um, however, I know that she has not 
completed Narcotics Anonymous two times a week. I'd ask the court to give her an opportunity to at least get enrolled with the Narcotics Anonymous program, Your Honor, and so we can maybe adjourn this matter for a month out so we can see her progress with that specific program and with the rest of her probation. I believe she's been out of the hospital. She's not committed to any facility at this time. I do believe that there are uh, remaining terms of her probation that if given the opportunity, she would be able to complete. I'd ask the court to give her that opportunity, Your Honor, uh, so she could meet with Ms. Bumpus, get enrolled in these NA classes, really help her help herself, and maybe set this matter up for a month to see where she's doing that. You know, I've just decided over these past few days that it becomes so important not to waste time. I, and I feel like that's going to be a waste of my time. Because she has a thousand dollar balance. She has not completed the alcohol highway safety education. She has three of four days of workforce, which of course we're not doing workforce now. So that increases changes to community service and, and it is gonna increase. So it changes and I'm gonna I would increase it. She failed to report for her drug testing October the second. I applaud her, I guess, just she checked herself into uh, outpatient treatment or inpatient treatment, and then she left. She didn't go back. She didn't finish. She didn't get discharged, right? Correct, um, but I believe that was because she was sent to the hospital, Your Honor. Well, they wouldn't kick you out of the program. She should have went back. And, and I they agree. Were, I think the court is correct. Right. She should have, she should have yeah, went back, absolutely. So, she went to the hospital, then she could have went back. She could when she got out of the hospital, she go you go back to the program. They're not gonna kick you out and you went to the hospital from their program. I know, Your Honor. Um, I think I just know that excuses are we just doing a lot of excuses. So she doesn't qualify for specialty courts and therefore she has to I mean she so so she's in regular court. And and, this, and regular court says if you don't do what you're supposed to do, then you just go to jail. Absolutely. And Your Honor, I just, I'd ask the court to empathize with Ms. Abate a bit here. This is also somebody, and I'm not making an excuse for her, but this is also somebody who's battling, who is battling addiction, who is battling bi a bipolar disorder as well, who still Which is why she should have been referred to the specialty courts. I, I Absol do, absolutely. I do empathize with her, but I, I don't have the capacity, nor the patience, nor the desire to, to address those issues in that specific manner. So she was in treatment, she left treatment. She, so, I mean, I, I, I can't, I, I don't, I'm not, she, she was there and she left. She, she was doing something, she stopped. I mean, so therefore it's, it's only one thing for me to do. I mean, I don't, I don't really understand. So she, she's going to waste up my time. You want me to clog up my doctor for December let Miss Abate come back just to tell me that she didn't have a chance to do whatever I'm asking her to do. Your Honor, the best thing I think for Mr. Ab for Miss Abate in this situation is Judge Bryant. Honestly, I think the best thing for Miss Abate. It might have been the old Judge Bryant, but the new Judge Bryant is tired of wasting her energy on things that people are on this right here. So the new Judge Bryant is tired of wasting her energy. The new Judge Bryant. Is, is just tired. Would the new Judge Bryant give Miss Abate one more chance, Your Honor, to show some compliance? The new Judge Bryant don't have patience for a lot of that either. I completely See, understand. I know y'all want that old Judge Bryant back, the one that they, you know, the one that, that they, that the one that cared and was passionate. The, I've just the seen one so that many people care in Miss Abate situation, Miss Abate situation, that avail themselves of of, Ms., of Judge Bryant's advice and end up being so much better. I just think that Miss yeah, Abate is one one step away. She's one step away, Judge. We're just asking for one chance. One chance. She's not. I have no confidence that she'll do it. Um, she was placed on probation. I'll continue her to her final review of December the eighth and see where she is and if she's not done what she's supposed to do then then it's going to be the end of the road absolutely and we completely understand i would just instruct miss abate at this time that later when she gets off today to give miss bumpers a call to touch base so we can get her going in those classes thank you your honor 
All right, December eighth at 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 nine thirty. I'm looking at the calendar, and the 8th is on a Tuesday. Oh. It is December 9th. Thank you, Robert. Thank You're you, welcome. Robert. Thank you, Ms. Bumpus. All right. Have a good day, Ms. Abate. You too. Your Honor, I think right. Mr. Croy is in the waiting room. He is, yes. And Your Honor, I'm sorry. I, I, I also asked another client of mine to sign in. She has, um, apparently we had a court date on the October 15th and I didn't get notice and, and she has a warrant, um, uh, Ashanti Marshall. So she may be signing in as well. Can you let me out of the waiting room, please? Sure. Thank you. Mr. Barton, I'm ready on McCroy, please. Yes, Your Honor. This is case number 2045000, the people of the state of Michigan versus Michael Anthony McCroy. The defendant is charged with child abuse, fourth degree. Today is the date set for final pretrial conference. Appearances, please. May it please the court, Darnell Barton, P83363 on behalf of the people. And for the record, Your Honor, I have the complaining witness here, Ms. Mackenzie McCroy, and she's with her mother, Ms. Jamesia Young. Ms. Ms. McCroy is a minor, I believe she's two years old, Your Honor. If you can get her in the screen. Oh. Sorry, Good morning, Your Honor. Jeff Perlman on behalf of uh, Mr. McCroy. Your P number, Mr. Perlman? P80517. Today is the Young, date set you, for, oh, go ahead, Mr. I'm, Spartan. I'm sorry, Your Honor, for interrupting. Ms. Young, if you could unmute yourself and just state your name and your child's name for the record, please. Yes, Jamesia Young, Mackenzie McCrory. Thank you, ma'am. Sorry, Your Honor. That's okay. Hi, little baby. Okay, <laughs> today is the date set for a, a final pretrial. How are we proceeding? Um, Your Honor, we, we had scheduled this day today and um, um, wanted to see if um, the um, complaining witness would show up. And um, if, if I could have a brief opportunity to um, break out with Mr. Barton. Um, okay. That'd be appreciated. All right. <laughs> and um, Ms. Young, wait, who who is, um, what's the name Young of the mother? Bad. Okay, yes, Ms. Young, Young, you don't have to, uh, you, you, she doesn't have to remain seated with you. you. You don't have to have her to remain seated with you. All right, um, I will put you in a breakout room, Mr. Barton and Mr. Perlman and Mr. Barton. Number seven. Actually, I'm gonna I'm a re I'm a close these out because I need to send that other phone back into a breakout room. So, let me close and then I'll recreate. All right, so you were in seven. I'll put you back, Mr. Barton and Mr. Perlman. All right, then while they're gone, let's see if there are any reviews um, oh, I saw Mr. Woodyard. He's not there anymore. All right. Um,
Okay, I don't see it. Let's see. Is Littleton no? Appleton. Gilmore. I don't see any um I don't see any reviews. Any more people that's for review. Let's see. Let me make sure I have everybody highlighted. Bradford. Taylor. Williams, Oregon, Fleming, is Fleming a walk-in, Miss Stevenson? Oh, you're not a co- <laughs> Oh, I had to revoke your privileges to put you in a um, waiting room. Thank you, Judge, for giving them back because I really need them. Um, Fleming, uh, Fleming is on the dock at eight thirty-five, Your Honor. Oh yeah, okay. Fleming, and then we got to bring the galaxy back in. Halprin, I believe that's Council on Ryan. Oh, I keep forgetting. See, I, do, do you, uh, y'all don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand. No, Sarah Farmer is just getting another date. Get her done. Good morning, Mr. Halpern. You Good morning, Your Honor. How are you today? I'm um, well, thank you. You you didn't identify yourself as a as an attorney in the waiting room. Oh, oh it didn't come up. I always leave it at that. Either no, it always either attorney or magistrate. So I'm sorry about that. Oh, you're uh, not. I, kept, I kept on I kept on forgetting. They kept on telling me that you were the lawyer on Ryan, and I kept on forgetting. Okay, yeah, and so I, and um, I tried to go back in, but when you're in the waiting room, that you you can't switch your name. Right, you can't. Okay. Um, well, the prosecutor is in a breakout room right now, so I'll be with you in a moment. Miss Stevenson, okay. you said who is getting another date? Sarah Farmer, Your Honor, and also Tiffany Taylor, who I'm not sure if she's still there. Uh, oh, Judge, do you have? Nine fifteen. Oh, sorry. Hold yes. on, counsel, please. Yes, ma'am. So, though Tiffany Taylor and farmer they're just getting a, a jury trial date yes your honor all right let me bring them out uh, your honor I'd also oh like i can't bring them out oh mr barton is out ready to mr. go your honor thank you mr Murad, what did you say i wanted to make a, a quick motion on behalf of miss tiffany taylor your honor if possible uh, Ms. what, Stevenson, I'm what kind of motion right could now. you possibly be making Motion to dismiss, Your Honor. At of nine fifteen, final pretrial. Yes, Your Honor. This was uh, this my this was a uh, alternative dispute resolution matter that the court oh. set out for jury trial to get enough time. Um, she was last here on um, on September twelfth, and I'm sorry. Which case? Mr. Perlman doesn't know how to come out of the breakout room. Tiffany Taylor, I'm texting you he's, right now. He's on the phone with his client, Your Honor. He's coming back in. Oh, okay. Tiffany Taylor. Yeah, she was to complete and dismiss, correct? All right. All right. Well, I'm bringing right. out, um, I'm ready on Ryan. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Ryan. And then, Mr. Barton, these, um, there, I, I see somebody else. I thought, 
who is this Sher Sherry Parks? Which case is that? Miss Parks is on the Hall Dean case. Uh, I believe that is 835, Your Honor. Paul Dean Rishkishina. All right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be doing the retained, and then I want to be ready on Hall Dean. Are you already on Hall Dean? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Then this is Richard Ryan. Case number 2044905, the people of the state of Michigan versus Richard Robert Ryan. The defendant is charged with operating while intoxicated. And today is the date set for a final pretrial conference. Appearances, please. And please, the court, Darnell Barton, PA 3363, on behalf of the people. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Richard Halpern, appearing on behalf of Richard Ryan, who's on Zoom today without uh, any objection. And counsel, your P number, please. P42729. All right, Mr. Ryan, your name, please. Richard Ryan. Today is the date set for final pretrial conference. How are we proceeding? Your Honor, there was an offer made, communicated, and accepted to reduce this down to an operating while impaired. I emailed the court about two hours ago in advice of rights form. My client's been advised of his rights. He consented to me signing that form, and he's ready to proceed. All right. <laughs> Today is the day set for a final pretrial conference and with respect to it, sir. Uh, all right, I am going to Wait a minute. All right, here we go. All right, Mr. Ryan, I have what appears to be, sir, your signature on an advice of rights form. I am sharing my screen. Do you see? Or I'll strike that. I see a signature on an advice of rights form that was signed with your consent. On your app, do you see that on my screen? I do. Ryan, to read over these rights with your lawyer, sir. I have. Trying to understand your rights. I do. I'm, I think you're breaking up, Judge. I, I believe. Do I understand my rights? Yes. Just hang tight, everyone. The judge just uh, fell off for one moment. Rick, I was having a hard time hearing her. I think I answered him correctly. Yeah, it, she was breaking up there for a minute. I'm back. Can you all hear me now? Yes, yes thank you, Your Honor. Welcome back. All right. My internet connect connection is apparently unstable on all of my devices. All right, sir, I did ask, did you understand your rights? And did you say yes? I did, Your Honor. 
Um, do you understand that this is a misdemeanor, sir, and therefore you have a right to a trial? I do, Your Honor. Do you understand that by entering into a plea, sir, you are giving up your right to a trial? I do, Your Honor. Has anyone threatened you in any way or promised you anything to get you to give up your right to have a trial in this case, sir? No, they have not. And I apologize when they kicked me out, it, it stopped sharing my screen. So hold on. All right. And this is the advice of rights form, sir, that you read and went over your rights with your lawyer, correct? Correct. Okay. Ooh, I have got to stand. Mr. Uh, Ryan, can you raise your right hand for me, please? Mm -hmm. Sir, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right. Let's see if my other device is working. Um, I don't have the information. Who's going to void, dear Mr. Um, Ryan? Um, I can, Your Honor. All right. Um, is that okay? Okay. So uh, you already stated your name for the record. And sir, Mr. Ryan, you do you recall being in the city of Detroit on, on or about uh, Monday, the, the 23rd of uh, 2019? I do. And were you operating a motor vehicle in the city of Detroit? I was. And were you stopped by the police? I was. And at the time that you, uh, before, uh, excuse me, prior to the time you stopped, you've been consuming alcohol. Is that correct? Yeah. Do you know what you were drinking? Uh, I think it was beer. Okay. And you, the uh, police officer stopped your vehicle while you were driving on uh, Southfield Road. Is that correct? Or Southfield Freeway? Correct. And you perform a series of tests? You did. And do you remember taking a uh, breathalyzer? I do. And do you agree that the results were 0.13 and 0.12? Correct. And do you agree that the consumption of alcohol visibly impaired your ability to operate the motor vehicle at the time of the stop? Um, yes. Okay, thank you. I don't have any other questions. People are satisfied, John. Can you repeat, can oh, you repeat the date, please? I'm sorry, the court broke up again. What was the question? Mm -hmm. Mr. Halper, can you repeat the date? The date was the 23rd of December, 2019. Mr. Ryan, is that the date? That is the date, Your Honor. All right. The court is satisfied. I will accept a guilty plea to one count of operating while visibly impaired. The court is going to um, set sentencing for December 16th at 9 o'clock a.m. if that's a good date for you, counsel. That works fine for me, Your Honor. 12, 16. Okay. All right, Mr. Ryan, um, prior to the sentencing, sir, you need to submit to, you must submit to a pre-sentence investigation and a substance abuse evaluation through the probation department. Uh, Mr. Halpern, do you have the current address and phone number for your client? Uh, I do. It, and um, if I can just, actually, we'll refer to my client because I'm going to have to switch screens if he can provide it to the court. Okay. So, well, what I want is for one of you, so that I was just going to say, one of you, you or your client, need to call my courtroom to just make sure that my clerk has his correct address and phone number. Okay, I and I believe the court. That would be great. Go ahead. Okay. I think the yes. phone, number, phone number is 313 965 8 uh no, 313 965 2295. Okay. So either will, one of you, one of you, call and I'll, give her the correct address and phone number. 
I will do so, Your Honor. I think it's also on the bottom of the plea form, but I'll follow up with the call. Oh, you could be correct. I forgot we just did that plea form. Let me just see if it's on there. Hold on. Hmm. I didn't I didn't put it on um I didn't put the plea the bottom of it on YouTube so they wouldn't see his address. So let me check. I, I can call it in, it's not a problem. Okay, the, the address is, but not the phone number. And that's what I really need, the phone number. Okay, so I'll provide that uh, off the record. All right. I'll give the call. All right, thank you. Yes. See okay, you thank in you. Month. And you know, or six weeks. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Bye-bye. Thanks, Your Honor. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank oh, you. I'm sorry. I'm glad I said that. Mr. Halperin. Um, yes, ma'am. With respect to the sentencing, does your client consent to being sentenced on Zoom or are you requesting yeah. an in-person appearance? No, no. Under our circ the circumstances of the world, we're happy to do it on Zoom. Yes. All right. Thank you, counsel. And so then we'll see you on Zoom December right. the 16th. Okay, 16th. have a great day. See you then. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right. We're ready on McCray, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Oh. So we are then back on the record in the people of the state of Michigan versus Michael McCroy, case number 204500. Okay. Um, Mr. Perlman, you've had an opportunity to speak with the prosecutor. I have, How Your Honor. How are we proceeding? Uh, Your Honor, my, my client would be entering a, um, a, a guilty plea under a um, delayed. Uh, Hold on, Mr. McCroy, you have to come into screen, sir. Mr. McCroy. Okay. All right. Mr. Um, Perlman, you said your client will be entering a plea. A plea on, um, uh, under a um, delayed sentence um, um, at which um, at which time the case would be, um, you know, dismissed if he complies with the terms of probation. Right. If I may jump in, Your Honor. You may. So, and... Uh, excuse me, Attorney Perlman is correct. So we, the people have offered a 12 month delayed sentence along with the anger management, um, again, however the court would decide, and then also parenting classes. And we also made it clear that uh, upon a good report that the people would have no objection to a nine month review or yeah, to a dismissal at a nine month review if the court would allow. All right. Um, <laughs> Mr. McCroy, I am going to show my screen because you, so let me share my screen. Are you able to see my screen, sir? Unmute yourself, Mr. McCroy, please. It said it's loading. Okay. Well, while it is loading, I am going to go ahead and read them. Is it, I, I can see it now, Judge, sorry. That's okay. And Mr. McCroy, do you understand that you have been brought to court on a misdemeanor charge that, and that you have the following 
basic rights. I'm starting at number two on the advice of rights form. <clears throat> Yes, no. You have a right to plead guilty or not guilty or to stand mute. That if you stand mute, a plea of not guilty will be entered on your behalf. You may plead no contest with the permission of the court. You have a right to a jury trial and to the assistance of an attorney. You have a right to have an attorney appointed to you. However, I do. You appear with an attorney today, so I'm going to skip number three. You may, uh, and number four. Number five, if you have a trial, you have the following basic rights. To call witnesses to speak for you at trial, you may get an order signed by the court to require witnesses to come to court. You have a right to hear, to see, and to question all witnesses against you at trial. You have a right to be a witness for yourself or to remain silent. If you choose not to be a witness on your own behalf, the prosecuting official may not comment on your refusal to testify. You have a right to be presumed innocent unless you are proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand those rights that I've read to you? That is correct, ma'am. I understand. You, and Your Honor, yeah, I'm sorry. I just before, I did want to request um, the court's permission to enter a no contest plea. Well, right now, okay. I'm just going over the rights right now. Okay. Uh, all right. And Mr. Uh, McCroy, do you understand that if the court accepts a plea, that you are you will be giving up all of the rights that I have just read to you, that you will not have a trial of any kind. The prosecutor will not have to prove anything and you will not get to call or, or cross-examine any witnesses. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Sir, has anyone threatened you in any way or promised you anything to get you to give up your rights as it relates to this matter? Uh, no, no one has threatened me. Has anyone promised you anything? No, no, no one has promised me anything. All right. Um, Mr. Barton, with respect to Mr. Perlman's um, statement to me about a no contest plea, is that the people's offer? I'm sorry, Your Honor. Can it was a, a tad breakup. Can you say that one more time for me? With res with respect to Mr. Perlman's statement or question to me, with respect to a no, no contest, contest plea. plea, no contest plea. No contest. Hold on, I'm sorry. Uh, is that the people's offer? No, a plea of no contest. Yeah, the people have no no issue with the no contest plea, Your Honor, for a civil liability. All right, then, with respect to the plea, the court will allow a no contest plea to the charge of child abuse fourth degree with a stipulation as to the factual basis. Uh, who is going to allocute the factual basis? Mr. Perlman, you want the opportunity? Um, yes, if I, if I may, what the date in question was? It was reported March 23rd. Okay. 2020. Okay. Mr. McCroy. Well, hold on before you I apologize. Ask. To February 29th. February okay. 29th. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say before you before you did, I want to know. I don't want to know the date it was reported. I want to I wanted to know the date of the alleged incident. So that's February 29th, 2020, Your Honor. I do apologize. That's okay. Okay, so Mr. Perlman, you may proceed. Uh, Your Honor, does the, uh, does the court have a copy of the uh, police report? I don't, because I'm working from home today. Okay. Your Honor, on, on 2, uh, 229, on February 29th, 2020, um, my client, a uh, first-time parent, um, uh, responded to his uh, young child who was... Uh, uh, I believe kept going over to the stove and 
and and wanted to to send a message to to obviously concerned concern concerned um you know the child would uh, uh believe that the, the child would get burned um did um uh, slap the child on the behind um uh, probably harder than he should have and um it did cause some redness um Mr. McCroy, you have to come in video, sir. Oh, I, I got some information to never mind. That, the, yeah, please never mind, because you, Mr. Mr. McCroy, you interrupt in this proceeding and you should not be. Now, either you're going to remain silent or you're not going to remain silent. We're going to have a trial, but you're not going to speak. You're, you're, that's, that's not how this is working. So either I'm going to accept a no contest plea or we're going to go with a different kind of plea. Okay, so Mr. Perlman, you, uh, with respect to the factual basis, you indicate that on that day, your uh, Mr. McCroy uh, is alleged to have um, hit the complaining uh, witness on the, on the body. Uh, won't happen no more. You're, you're on. You're on. If I may. No, nobody may. So, no, nobody may. Listen. Nobody may. Listen. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I put myself on mute on my other thing. I'm trying to work my two systems. This is how it works. We're going to state the factual basis. That is the basis of the plea, or we're not. <laughs> Mr. McCoy is not going to interrupt the factual basis for this no contest plea. Your Honor. And that's I, how it's going to work. I apologize, Your Honor. The factual I, basis, that's okay. All I want is the date of the incident. And uh, all we need for the, for the plea is the date of the incident, where the incident occurred, and what is alleged to have occurred. That is the factual basis I need to accept the plea date, place, and and what occurred. Mr. Barton, are you trying to if say I something? I, I am, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Okay, on March, excuse me, on March 23rd, why do we have that day here? Oh, this is the report. Okay. Your Honor, so on February 29th, 2020, uh, we had the defendant staying with the complaint, or the complaining witness staying with the defendant the defendant, the complaining witness went home to her mother. She had bruises on her buttocks that resembled purple or blackish bruising. The defendant stated he spanked her for only approximately 15 seconds with his hand. And there was a report filed and charges were filed after that. And, and where that is occurred, this if I'm, Yes, Your Honor. The occurrence allegedly was at 14480 Collingham Road, and that's in the city of Detroit, County of Wayne. All right, the court will receive the factual basis and accept a no contest plea um, to one count of child abuse fourth degree. Having accepted the no contest plea, um, The court is going to set the matter for sentencing December the 16th, if that's a good date for you, counsel. That works, Your Honor. All right, that's at nine o'clock. Prior to the sentencing, Mr. McCroy must submit to a pre-sentence investigation through the probation department. Um, Mr. Perlman, um, who's going to call my courtroom to make sure we have Mr. McCroy's correct uh, contact information? Will it be you or will it be Mr. McCroy? Um, I can call your honor or-, or All my right. Commit. Yes. And do you, do you have my courtroom phone number? I do. All right, so then let's call 
and get the make sure we have his correct address and phone number so that probation can contact him regarding the pre-sentence investigation. Anything okay. further? Um, from the people, Your Honor, thank further, you. Nothing further at this time, Your Honor. All right, then we're all set for December the 16th. Um, what I'm going to say with respect to Mr. McCroy is two things. He shall not be in a vehicle. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to conduct court with Mr. McCroy in that vehicle. He clearly has an unstable uh, signal and keeps moving around in that vehicle. And it's very disruptive to, to my eyes. Um, it was going to be something else I was going to say, but I forgot. Um, with respect to the sentencing, Mr. Perlman, is your client consenting to being sentenced on Zoom, but I'm only going to consent to allowing him to be sentenced on Zoom if he is going to be able to go somewhere where he can have a stable connection and, and yeah. he must be on video. I don't talk to defendants who are not on video. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Then we're all set for December the 16th. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. Mr. Perlman, who was the other? Um, she, she may be in the waiting your room. Other client that you, she may be in the waiting room. She wanted me to let you walk. Um, her name is uh, Ashanti Marshall. However, um, I have to sign on to another hearing. Is she in the waiting room? I don't see anyone by that name in the waiting room. I do see an iPhone that doesn't have a name in the waiting room. Okay, Your Honor, will we be able to do this tomorrow? If that's her, we'll call you. Yeah, do it tomorrow. Okay, okay I'll do it tomorrow. Thank you. All right, okay. Bye. Now. Bye. All right, um, I'm ready for Hall Dean. And you said that's Perks? Parks? Sherry Parks? Parks? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Ms. Parks, I need you to come into the and you, you're kind of moving around a bit too much for me. Okay, this is case number 2045667, the people of the state of Michigan versus Kashina Paul Dean. The defendant is charged with assault aggravated. Today is the date set for free trial. Appearances, please. May it please the court, Darnell Barton, P83363, on behalf of the people. And for the record, Your Honor, I have the complaining witness here, Ms. Sherry Parks. Ms. Parks, can you unmute your phone and just state your name for the record? You want to go ahead and make sure you're stable, keep your phone still as possible, and go ahead and state your name for the record for us, please. Sherry Parks. Thank you, ma'am. And, and good morning, Your Honor. Rad Murad, P83665, on behalf of Ms. Kaishina Haldeen. Ms. Haldeen, can you unmute yourself, ma'am, and tell the court your name? Kaishina Harding. Today is the day set for pretrial. How are we proceeding? The complaining witness is present. Respectfully requesting a final pretrial conference, Your Honor, to receive discovery. The court is going to set final pretrial conference, or I apologize. I'm going to continue a not guilty plea on behalf of Ms. Haldeen and set a final pretrial conference for January the 21st at nine o'clock via Zoom. Discovery should be submitted to defense by January the 4th. Bond with, will continue with no contact with the complaining witness. The complaining witness is present today and therefore she is excused from the final pretrial of January 21st, however, as a complaining witness, of course, you may appear at any scheduled court appearance. However, you are not required to appear January the 21st. Anything further as it relates to Ms. Hall Dean? Nothing from the people, Your Honor. Thank you. Nothing further. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, then we're all set for January 21st at 9 o'clock via Zoom. Have a good Thank day. You, we'll be in touch, Ms. Parks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. All 
I'm ready on Fleming and I think I had the same problem with this lawyer last time uh, with this audio. All right, I'm ready on Fleming. This is case number 2044354, the people of the state of Michigan versus Dino Fleming. The defendant is charged with assault or assault and battery. Today is the date set for a pretrial conference. Appearances, please. May it please the court, Darnell Barton, PA3363, on behalf of the people, Your Honor. And Ryan Moran, PA3665, on behalf of Mr. Dino Fleming, who's present via Zoom. Mr. Fleming, unmute yourself, sir, and tell the court your name. Mr. Fleming. My name. Hello. State your name, sir. Dino Fleming. Today is the date set for pretrial. I'm sorry. Yes, for pretrial, how are we proceeding? Your Honor, respectfully ask for a dismissal if uh, no complaining witness is present. Mr. Barton. Yes, Your Honor. The complaining witness in this case, his name is Miss Marie Fleming. Miss Marie Fleming. She has not appeared and the people do not have any uh, explanation for her lack of appearance, Your Honor. So we would ask in the alternative, if you do dismiss, you do so without prejudice. Today is the date set for pretrial, and the complaining witness has failed to appear, though by the name of it, this should not be on my docket, but the complaining witness has failed to appear. The people have no explanation for the failure, and they are unable to proceed. The court is going to grant defense counsel's motion and dismiss the matter without prejudice. Mr. Fleming, give me the numbers only to your street address, sir. The numbers only to your street three, address. Three, five, three, two, eight. M Madam Clerk. No, Judge. Mr. Fleming, do you have something to write with? Yes. Mr. Fleming, my courtroom phone number is 313-965-2295. Sir, call my courtroom and give my clerk your correct address current address, I should say, so that we can mail you a copy of the uh, order of dismissal for your records. Anything further as it relates to Mr. Fleming? Nothing from the people, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Murad. Nothing further. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Fleming. Have a great day. All right. You too. Thank you. All right. Oh. Good morning, Mr. Whitfield. Can you step back from that device and unmute yourself? And it's very, it would be probably more helpful if you would identify yourself as a lawyer. You could be sitting in a waiting room all day long if you don't identify your screen name as a lawyer. All right. Um, this is I saw Mr. Whitford. This is Mr. K Mac. Let's bring Mr. K Mac out of the waiting room. Mr. K Mac is no longer in my waiting room, so your client is not here. Oh wait, I already brought him out. Brought her out. Okay, Miss K Mac, my I didn't do that. Did one of y'all did that? No, you. Yes, y'all did. I'm gonna revoke them privileges. I'm gonna revoke I them. I would privileges. not violate. It took me too long to get this far, Your Honor. Honor. I would not. I would not. I would not. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Counsel, you're too close to your device. I, you're, you're too close. I can't see your, you're too close to your device. Okay, there we go. Let's go right there. That's better. Okay, this is um, case number 2044394, the people of the state of Michigan versus Micah Monet Kamak. C-A-M-A-K. The defendant is charged with assault or assault and battery. And today is the date set for a final pretrial. Appearances, please. 
May it please the court, Darnell Barton, P83363, on behalf of the people, Your Honor. Your Honor, for the record, Benjamin Woodfield, on uh -oh. behalf of the defendant. Okay, your P number, counsel? I'm sorry, P23562. All right, and Ms. K. Mack, unmute yourself and tell the court your name, please. Michael K. Mack. Today is the day set for a final pretrial conference. How are we proceeding? If I may, counsel. So, Your Honor, I spoke with the complaining witness about this particular case on October 28th. We had an in-depth conversation uh, in which she essentially laid out to me that she would like to dismiss the charges. I spoke. I have since spoken with opposing counsel uh, just to verify the situation and make sure everything was copesthetic. And I believe from the people's perspective, it is. So at this point in time, the people would move to dismiss this case, Your Honor. On behalf of the defendant, we would concur, Your Honor. Today is a date set for a final pretrial conference. The people have moved to dismiss the matter. The court is therefore going to grant the motion and dismiss this matter without prejudice. Um, Mr. Barton and Mr. Whitfield, who's going to submit the order to the court for signature? Mr. Whitfield, if you could send in a uh, dismissal, that would be great. Oh, Are you I able to I, do that? No, I'm not able to do it this morning. Oh. Oh. I could possibly do All it right, tomorrow. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can ask one. Ryad, would you? Do you mind if I? I appreciate you. you. Thank you, Ms. Davidson. Thank you, Ms. Davidson. Thank you. All right, we'll get ahead. Yeah, for you, Mr. Too much. What I what I want to know is why Mr. Barton can't do it, but we're gonna talk about that after the, later another day. All right. I don't Ms. have the Ms. file Ms. here, Your Honor. Oh, I'm sorry. No Go ahead. I don't need to, they don't have no file either. You don't need no file to do to do the whole thing. But go. I mean, well, whatever. Don't they have the it, three different? Quick, you just click on the computer. No, Mr. Steve, Mr. Mr. Oh, Barton, I don't, someone can send it to me. I'll get it done, Your Honor. I don't want to waste your what time. What you mean, send it to you? It's on the scale of proof court form thing. Listen, we we digress. We digress. Miss K. Mack, can you please unmute yourself and give me the numbers only to your street address, please? The numbers only to your street address. One seven zero four one maryland all right numbers street. only numbers only numbers oh, only numbers only i'm sorry madam That's clerk right. is that, that is what you right. have i'm sorry miss Muldrow. did you say yes yes all right then we will send you a copy of the order of dismissal for your records um uh, miss k mac anything further as it relates to this matter yeah, there's one thing further, Your Honor. She's wearing a tether, and uh, I would like to get that release. Well, Mr. Whitfield, I'm, it, isn't it automatic that they'll, isn't a tether removal automatic when the case is dismissed? Well, I assume so, but I'm just making a record of that. I don't know why you're shaking your head to the left and to the right, Ms. K. Mack, but I've been doing this for for 29 years and and I have yet to see a person on a tether on a dismissed case. So when the case gets dismissed, Ms. K Mac goes to the tether unit with her dismissal paperwork and they remove the tether. So we're going to send a copy of the dismissal and and the clerk can send over the copy to the tether unit. But um, for for 29 years I've never seen a person walking around on the tether after their case gets dismissed. All right, thank you, Judge. Okay. All right, you're welcome. Um, Madam Clerk, make sure you fax that over to the tether unit. Will do. All right. Anything further, Mr. Whitfield or Mr. Barton? Nothing further, Nothing people, Your Honor, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Every, have a great day. And so, Miss K. Mac, you could probably go to the tether unit this afternoon. All right. I'm sorry, Jackie. You said go this afternoon. You can probably go this afternoon. 
after two o'clock, I would suggest. Okay. After two o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Yon. Okay. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Mm. Um. I'm tired. I might not get to you all's walk-ins. I have to come down to the court for my trial. Okay, this is, um, let's see. I'm going to bring out, Miss Miss Bumpus, who else do you have left? Uh, Your Honor, I have Lamar Gilmore, Beltham, Appleton, and Lamar Gaffney. Um, I have Lamar Gilmore, Beltham, Appleton, and Lamar Gaffney. No, but they're not here. Okay. Gilmore, Appleton, and who? Gavin. They're not here. Okay. You're all done. Thank you. I'll see you. All right. Have a good day. All right. I'm bringing in Bradfield and Doherty. Judge, can I break out with that iPhone so that we don't get stalled on him or her? All right, this is Destiny Bradford, case number 2044563. Four four five six three. The people of the state of Michigan versus Destiny Renee Bradford. The defendant is charged with assault or assault and battery. And today is the date set for a final pretrial appearances. Please. May it please the court, Darnell Barton, P eight three three six three, on behalf of the people. And Rod Murad, P eight three six six five, on behalf of Miss Destiny Bradford who is present via Zoom. Ms. Bradford, if you can unmute yourself, ma'am, and tell the court your name, please. Hi. Hi, can you tell the court your name, please? She froze. Ms. Bradford, if you can hear us, please state your name for the record. Hi, my name is Destiny Bradford. Today is the date set for final pretrial. How are we proceeding? Janice Stevenson, also on behalf of Ms. Destiny Bradford, who I believe at this time, Your Honor, will um, continue the matter for trial. Mm -hmm. All right. The court is going to continue a not guilty plea on behalf of Ms. Bradford and continue the matter for another final pretrial. The court will set the final pretrial for January the 21st. At 9.15. And if we are, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean January 21st. That was my other final pretrial date. February the um February third. I'm sorry, February third, you're on? Yes, Mr. Okay. Barton. February third so, at nine fifteen. Okay. Thank you. Anything further as it relates to Miss Bradford? Nothing from the people, Your Honor. And nothing further, Your Honor. All right, then we're all set, Miss Bradford. Um, we will see you in February the third, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, this is with respect to case numbers. I'm sorry, to, uh, this is Sarah Farmer, case number 184549, the people of the state of Michigan versus Sarah Farmer. Sarah Lynn Farmer, the defendant is charged with assault or assault and battery. Today's the date set for pretrial, final pretrial. Appearances, please. May it please the court, Darnell Barton, P83363 on behalf of the people, Your Honor. And for the record, Your Honor, Janice Stevenson appearing on behalf of Ms. Sarah Farmer. Ms. Farmer, please tell the court your name. Sarah Farmer. Today is the day set for final pretrial. The matter was scheduled at 9.15, which means it was um, for potentially to set a jury trial. How are we proceeding? Continue the plea of not guilty, Your Honor, and continue the jury demand. All right, then the court is going to set the matter for another final pretrial. <clears throat> January the 28th. At 9.15, as we are still not allowing jurors in the building. All right, anything further as it relates to Ms. Farmer? Nothing from the people, Your Honor, thank you. Nothing on behalf of Ms. Farmer, thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you, Ms. Farmer, and we'll try again in January. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, have a good day. All right, this is Tiffany Taylor, case number 1946583. The people of the state of Michigan versus Tiffany Taylor, the defendant is charged with assault or assault and battery. Today is the date set for a final pretrial conference. Appearances, please. May it please the court, Darnell Barton, P83363, on behalf of the people you are. And Ryan Murad, P83665, on behalf of Ms. Tiffany Taylor, who's present via Zoom. Ms. Taylor, if you can unmute yourself, ma'am, and tell the court your name. Tiffany Taylor. Today is the date set for a final pretrial conference. How are we proceeding? Your Honor, we were last before the court on October 7, 2020, um, where we were engaged in alternative dispute resolution. At that time, Ms. Taylor had completed eight parenting classes and eight anger management classes. Um, however, the court, as well as Mr. Barton, I believe, waived the remaining parenting requirement uh, classes. I believe the court felt it was not necessary to the case. And we were to, she was to complete only two more anger management classes, a total of 10, which I believe Mr. Barton did agree to from 12. Now, I did have a conversation with Mr. Rice this morning, as we do not have a certificate present. But as an officer of the court, I verified that Mr. Wright says Ms. Taylor has completed nine of the, uh, what he believes is a 12 anger management class requirement. Ms. Taylor then tendered to me proof that she has cash after Mr. Rice 10 separate, on 10 separate occasions, um, ass, uh, asserting that she's completed 10 classes. Now, Mr. Wright maintains she's completed nine out of 12, and Ms. Miss Taylor is maintaining that she's completed 10, she has provided me proof of that of those 10 classes, Your Honor. Um, I would ask the court to take that in consideration as my verification of an officer of the court that she's completed 10 classes. Well, that Mr. Rice has maintained she's completed nine classes and she's shown me proof of 10 classes. I have those screenshots present and I'm ready to tender them immediately, Your Honor. Um, I'd ask the court to take that in consideration and we move for dismissal pursuant to our agreement. In lieu of that, Your Honor, just a brief adjournment for her to get verification of that 10 of that 10th class. Your Honor, if I may. You may. Your Honor, I believe uh, we've pretty much completed what we needed to with Ms. Taylor at this point. She's done everything she needs except for that one class. However, I don't want to stretch this case out any further. I believe she's uh, done what she needs to do to satisfy the people in this particular matter. So the people would uh, concur with the defense's motion. Today is the day set for final pretrial, and the people have indicated that notwithstanding 
the lack of proof on a on the ten classes, the tenth class that they will um, still dismiss the matter. So the court will therefore dismiss the matter without prejudice. Miss Taylor, give us the numbers only to your street address, ma'am. The numbers only to your street address. Eight two nine four. All right. The court is going to. Oh, I'm sorry, Madam Clerk. That's not correct, Judge. All right, um, Miss Taylor, do you have something that you can write with, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Dodger, do you can you you have about uh, five seconds or so to come in video? Um, ma'am, the courtroom phone number is three one three nine six five two two nine five. That's three one three nine six five. Two two nine five. Please call the courtroom and give us your current address so that we mail you a copy of the order of dismissal for your record. Anything? Uh, nothing from the people, Your Honor. Nothing further, Your Honor. On behalf of defense. All right, then we're all. Thank you and have a good day, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, ma'am. Thank you. This is Edward Williams, case number 1846440, the people of the state of Michigan versus Edward Williams. The defendant is charged with animals abandonment. Today's the date set for final pretrial appearances, please. Yeah, please, the court, Darnell Barton, PA3363, on behalf of the people, Your Honor. And Rad Murad, PA3665, on behalf of Mr. Edward Williams, who's present via Zoom. Mr. Williams, please unmute yourself, sir, and tell the court your name. Edward Williams, the fourth. Today is day set for final pretrial. How are we proceeding? We ask the court for a jury trial at this time, Your Honor. The court is going to continue a not guilty plea on behalf of Mr. Williams, continuing the matter to a final pretrial conference, to another final pretrial conference, at which time we will see if jury trials have been resumed. The court is going to set the final pretrial conference for February the 3rd. at 9.15. Anything further? Nothing. Yes, Your Honor. I, I Just a brief question. The original offer on this case was, I believe, 24 hours, uh, the, the animal cruelty course. Is that, is the defendant still working towards that, or are we, is that offer no longer? Um, I don't if think. If you want to let me know later on. We're going to work on okay. that. I don't think he even. He I wants didn't to... communicate that to him. Okay. Yeah, All right. I think I did either. And I have Mr. Williams' information. I will relay that offer to him and we'll be in touch, Mr. Byron. Okay. Just just for the record, it was 24 hours animal cruelty course and dismiss. Okay. Got it. All right. Thank you guys. Sorry, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mr. Williams, have a good day. I'll see you back on Zoom February 3rd at 9 15. Okay, you have a good one. You too, thank you. All right, bringing in somebody else who might be ready. I'm gonna remove the iPhone from my courtroom. We're gonna let Miss Boykin stop her nap that she was taking in the vehicle. All right, this is case number Two zero. Uh, oops. Four four two two zero. The people of the state of Michigan versus Tiana Victoria Boykins. The defendant is charged with three counts of assault or assault and battery. Today is the date set for final pretrial appearances, please. 
May it please the court, Darnell Barton, P833, 63 on behalf of the people, Your Honor. And uh, Ryan Murad, P3665, on behalf of Ms. Tiana Boykins, who's present via Zoom. Ms. Boykins, please tell the court your name. Tiana Boykins. Today is the day set for final pretrial. How are we proceeding? Uh, Your Honor, at this time, um, Ms. Boykin is respectfully asking for a jury trial. Today is the day set for final pretrial. The court is going to continue a not guilty plea on behalf of Ms. Boykin, continuing the matter to uh, another final pretrial, at which point we will see if we are have resumed the jury trials and are able to schedule the jury trial. The court is going to set this matter for February the 3rd at 9.15. And anything further? Nothing, Nothing from the people, Your Honor. All right. Okay, we're all set for February the 3rd at 9.15. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. You. Have a good day. You too. All right. This is going to be all right. I tried to bring in Mr. Doherty, but he didn't respond. Okay. I'll try one more time. And then the other, well, you all don't know who this rebel is. So that might be. We've gotten a phone call indicating that Ashley Thomas is in the waiting room. That may be her. So who's going to break out? Um, I, or Janice, doesn't matter. Uh, are we going to bring Ms. Lyons in? If we're going to bring Ms. Lyons in, then Mr. Murad can go. Well, I'm going to say Mr. Murad. Okay. And just know she just got in the breakout room. Now don't act like she's been here all day. No, she hasn't. Don't, don't act like she's been here. Been here all day. She just got here. I don't even have the internet strength to, to make false reports and stuff today. I'm hanging on for my life. Right. <laughs> The Doherty, you have, a, 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 if you don't come into screen right now, I'm going to remove you from the courtroom, sir. This is my third attempt to try to get you, get your case. Okay. Yeah, okay. And I'm not going to do this next time. If there's a next time, I'm not going to ask you three times to come into your video. You are supposed to be prepared and ready to proceed. I'm just not going to do it. All right. This is case number 2045219, the people of the state of Michigan versus Timothy Bernard Dougherty. The defendant is charged with assault of a utility worker, I think. It's cut off on my docket. Today is the date set for... Final pretrial conference appearances, please. May it please the court, Darnell Barton, P83363, on behalf of the people, Your Honor. And for the record, Your Honor, Janice Stevenson, appearing on behalf of Timothy Doherty. Sir, please tell the court your name. Timothy Doherty. Today is the day set for final pretrial conference. How are we proceeding? At this point, Your Honor, we're going to ask that the matter be continued for trial. We we will continue to work toward a pretrial resolution, Your Honor. The court is going to continue a not guilty plea. On behalf of Mr. Dockery, I will continue the matter to another final pretrial, February the 3rd at 9.15, so that if we are allowing jurors in the building at that time, 
then the court will set a jury trial date. The court is going to um, continue bond. And I, what is this exact charge? Oh, it's assault with, so no contact with complaining witness. I'm not sure that works out. Okay, anything further? Nothing on behalf of Mr. Doherty, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Um, Mr. You. Doherty, you're all set until February the 3rd at 9.15, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, you're welcome. Okay, um, so Ms. Lyons and Mr. Butler, they're walk-ins. Mr. Butler is at 8.30. Oh, Mr. Butler is at 8.30 and he's Woodier. And Mr. Woodier was here earlier. Can we call Mr. Woodier, uh, Madam Clerk? I don't know where he went and he didn't come back. Judge, he's not coming back. He has another court case at another um, another um, courthouse. He did phone in. He said he's not coming back. Yes, Judge. M Mr. I, I like Mr. Woodyard. I don't want to hold him in contempt of court. Can you call Mr. Woodyard and tell him that I said I like him and that's an unacceptable answer and I don't want to have to hold to, I mean, I don't really like holding anybody in contempt, but I definitely don't like to hold the people that I, that, that are pleasant to uh, have in front of me. I don't want to hold them in contempt. His client is here. All right, so I'll bring in Ms. Lyons. Thank you, Your Honor. This is case number, oh, I don't know. This is a walk-in. Judge, I think we've scheduled Mrs. Lyons. Madam Clerk. Her next court date is December 14th. So why is Ms. Stevenson um, holding me up when um, you walk in? I have a bond request for Ms. Lyons, Your Honor. No, because she can't be, I mean, what's the bond request? She should have came to court the other day. We She didn't come and we, we gave her a new court date. No. Okay. What? She she was here, and we did not address um the the contact condition. So Ms. Lyons, oh, she didn't take it. No, she didn't. Okay. So, what does she want? So, um, she has been ordered um since the arraignment before the magistrate not to return to a location which she's going to tell us right now she's on tether and is prohibited from going to a certain location uh, which i believe is the um the offense location that is a, a home where the complaining witness does not live go in a breakout with mr barton okay go into a breakout with mr barton and if you say whatever then yes Okay, thank you, Judge. Tell, tell him whatever you're trying to say. All right. Okay. So hold on. Um, Mr. Barden was in number seven. I'll send you to number seven, Ms. Stevenson. Okay. All right. And then we're going to take a brief break.
Are we ready? Yes, Judge. All right. So do we have um the case information for Miss Lyon? Yes, yes, we do. Thank you. All right, go ahead. Give me one second, Judge. Calling case number 200-454-0801, State of Michigan versus Unique Chantel Lyons. Defendant is charged with count two, count one, child abuse, fourth degree, count two, assault or assault and battery. Defendant is a walk-in. Uh, 
appearances. May it please the court, Darnell Barton, P8363 on behalf of the people, Your Honor. And for the record, Your Honor, Janice Stevenson appearing on behalf of Ms. Unique Lyons. Ms. Lyons, please unmute and tell the court your name. Unique Lyons. All right, Ms. Stevenson. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, we um, would like to address bond. All right. Thank you. Having conferred with the people, Your Honor, we would ask that the court's no contact condition be modified to allow. Ms. Thomas, Ms. we're going to put on lip uh, gloss or whatever we're doing. To allow, okay, go ahead. Uh, to allow Ms. Lyons to return to the location of the incident. Judge, I'm going to have to. Um, Get that exact address. Uh, we would have, having conferred with the people, Your Honor, we are, we're asking that Ms. Lyons be allowed to return to the location of the offense, which at this time I represent as an officer of the court is an unoccupied dwelling. No one lives there, which is uh, why Ms. Lyons would like to return to that home to make sure that it um, is safeguarded. Mr. Barton. Yes, Your Honor, that is correct. I've spoken with um, Attorney Stevenson about this case, and the person that I've spoken to is not at that location. So the people have no issue with that. All right, so the, the court will grant the motion and modify the bond to discontinue the no contact with that location. Thank you very much, Your Honor. <laughs> Anything further? Nothing from the people, Your Honor. Nothing on behalf of Ms. Lyons. We thank you, Your Honor. All right. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Lyons. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. All right. So, Mr. Murad, you, you all want me to call Ms. Ashley Thomas's case. You're, you're muted. Yes, Your Honor, please. Mr. Murad, do you realize that it is 1143 and Ms. Thomas's case was scheduled for 830 this morning? Your Honor, I would apologize to the court um, for any tardiness. I believe this is Ms. Thomas's first Zoom appearance in this courtroom. I'm not making an excuse. I just want the court to know. I'd ask the court to give her one chance, Your Honor, uh, to hear her out and maybe give her another date at least. It is her first pretrial conference. I mean, it's the it could be your first time ever. It could be the first time ever in your life hearing about court. But certainly, if you got a notice that said at 830, you don't come at 1130. I'm not going to hear her today. I understand. Um, I, she can. Get, I'll reschedule her, but I'm not going to hear her today. I understand, Your Honor. Um, I also do understand that uh, there's. I'm not sure if there's a complaining witness present today. I would ask that upon her being. They wouldn't care. I court, wouldn't care if it wasn't. If the court would mm -hmm. require the complainant. I'll, I'll reschedule her, but I'm not hearing her today. You can't come at 1130 and your case was at 830. I completely understand that. I will reschedule the case. November the 24th. And can that be at 835, Your Honor? Yes, it's at 835. Thank you. All right. 
835, Ms. Thomas, not 1130. Anything further? Nothing, thank you so much. All right, we're all set. All right, have a good day. All right, and I don't know who Kawan Butler is. That's Mr. Woodyard's client. Oh yeah, that's right. Let me bring him in. What did Mr. Woodyard say? I didn't get a response, Judge. Oh, I guess so. Hmm. Um, Be Mr. Buck not even ready. All righty. Well, we're going to stop the YouTube.